Hi, okay, so <clears throat> let's get back to the material. So yesterday we got to Einstein's idea that he wanted to preserve principle of relativity. And so what he did is he decided to start from scratch. And uh, he proposed the following two postulates. Okay, so he said, well, what you guys are doing is, uh, it's not leading us anywhere, it's com complicated. He didn't say that, of course. This is uh, sort of a cartoonish uh, reading of history. And he said, Let, let's just start from scratch, okay? And he said, well, with the following two postulates, I can explain everything and everything would fit together. All the pieces of the puzzle would fit together. Okay, so the first is just principle of relativity. Okay, so uh, Einstein's postulates. Special relativity. Short one, and this is just POR. All laws of nature are, are, are the same in all inertial reference frames. And by the same, we mean they take the same form. Um, and you might wonder, what, what's the big deal about inertial frames? Why are we so focusing on inertial frames? And there isn't, right? We can demand something even more general. We can say all laws of nature take the same form in all frames, okay? <clears throat> that is an even more general uh, statement of principle of relativity. In special re relativity, we only demand uh, sameness or symmetry with respect to uh, inertial frames, right? So if you have one frame and another frame moving with some speed relative to the first frame, it's clear, it, we, we, it, 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 we want to insist that uh, laws take the same form. Okay, so this one is the same as before, but it does not automatically assume to be synonymous with Galilean invariance. There's nothing here you know, that mentions uh, velocity addition rule or a Galilean uh, coordinate transformation, okay? The kind of invariance that it dictates will be derived, but not assumed. Okay. In postulate two, this is really a new one, and it seems that, I'm not sure, uh, again, Einstein's thoughts, but it seems like one was forced into this postulate, okay, based on what I said yesterday about electrodynamics, and that the speed of light is the same in all, again, we're focusing on inertial frames, so in all inertial frames. This one just goes against everything that we hold dear. It's not intuitive at all. I admit that it's, I, I can't wrap my mind around this. It's hard to imagine this. But it gets the job done. It does remove all the confusion and inconsistency related to a &M and everything else. Newtonian mechanics though, they have to be fixed. And that was done. Uh, in any case, it seems like we were forced into these ideas uh, mostly by, by studying electrodynamics. 
there's an old, old idea called Occam's razor. Have you heard of Occam's razor? This is not related to relativity, this is just in general. I think it's, it's spelled like that. Occam's razor. It is a principle that an explanation that requires the least amount of assumptions is the correct one, correct explanation. So special relativity is kind of an Occam's razor. Starting with these minimal set of postulates, with these two postulates, everything can be explained. Uh, I'm not sure exactly the, the actual wording of, of this principle, Occam's razor. Maybe not the correct one, but the best one, but something like that. Anyway, that's a tiny bit of philosophy. Okay, so this is, uh, these are the Einstein's postulates. Again, special relativity was forced on humanity by electromagnetism. Yet it's important for me to mention, and I will mention it again, that special relativity is not a theory of light or electromagnetism, okay? The or light or electromagnetism was simply a path to special relativity, okay? And to see that at some point later, I will present another take on the meaning of the second postulate sort of a more modern version of the second postulate that does not mention light. After all, despite the historical introduction designed to make the second postulate more acceptable, that was the point of the first three lectures, it still appears to be really unintuitive. All our intuition of everyday phenomena runs against this idea. So we will look at another perspective, um, but not today. All right. So in the following, we will look at the consequences of, uh, of these two postulates. And uh, that will take us maybe a few lectures. And the first consequence is relativity of simultaneity, which we will do today in portion three.